Hello subscribers and welcome to my channel. Whether you are thinking about investing in Oakley or whether you already hold some shares, you have come to the right place. I can tell you that this video is one of the most in-depth videos I've ever made um, and that is on Oakley and I hope you get a lot of value through this video. Today I wanted to share with you what is Oatly, what is the demand for Oatly looking like and oats in general and how is the trend for dairy alternatives looking like. Um, we're going to see the Q1 2022 earnings that Oatly posted out earlier this week. Uh, what was the guidance for 2022? We'll have a look at the company financials. Uh, we'll have a look at how the company is innovating and building new products. Uh, we'll also have a look at how the company is optimizing for production volume and setting up new facilities. And finally, a lot of evaluation uh, from my side on whether this is a buy or not. And lastly, if you stay until the end, uh, I will also share with you how many Oatly shares I currently hold and what is my plan going forward. We have a lot to talk about, as you might have guessed. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you're new to the Oatly brand, Oatly is the world's original and largest oat milk company that uses oats to produce alternatives to dairy products. Now, they have a breadth of their dairy portfolio, uh, including alternatives to milk, ice cream, yogurt, cooking creams, spreads, on-the-go drinks, you name it, they have it. Um, and they are available in 20 plus, plus countries uh, globally. Uh, now, nothing sums this up better than their corporate profile. So let's let's go over to investors.oatly.com and let's have a look at their uh, corporate profile. So as you can see, they made about $669 million in revenue. Um, this, the, sorry, the last 12 months, uh, which ended in Q1 2022, uh, their total addressable market is about 628 billion. They are in 88,000 retail doors and about 90,000 food service locations. Um, now, if you're wondering what a food service location is, um, that's the industry which deals with the preparation and servicing of food outside of your home. So things like KFC, McDonald's, you know it now. Um, now, they also have nine production facilities planned to be built by 2023 which should allow the company to have a lot higher gross margins than they have today, uh, leading to profitability in the future. And lastly, they have seven product categories. So let's head over to the Oatly website to see what products they sell. So as you can see here, um, they have oat milk, um, they have frozen desserts, um, they have ice creams, they call it novelties bar, um, <laughs> they have soft serve, um, and they have yogurt, like, like you know, uh, oat gut, they call it, uh, which is quite cool, um, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, the best thing is that though, oat milk is such a great alternative to regular milk, especially if you're lactose intolerant. Now, not only is Oatly delicious by itself, but it also tastes amazing with coffee and many other drinks. So me personally, I just recently switched to oat milk and it was definitely one of the best decisions that I ever made. I love oat milk, and I would definitely say that Oatly is the best non-dairy milk that is out there. Um, it is very creamy, it is very smooth, and I literally have no reason to go back to normal milk. Um, so TLDR, what we are saying is, Oatly has got the brand, the appeal, and the taste that people really love. And that is, for me, absolutely critical for a company I invest in. Next up, I wanted to draw your attention to some of the very interesting charts I've been seeing lately um, and, 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 and some of the charts that Oatly shared in their earnings call, um, which illustrate how important Oats and Oatly as a company are becoming as we go along in the future. Um, so this chart, this, these set of charts actually show you um, the emerging Oat dominance across different markets. So uh, if you look at Sweden, um, where Oatly is actually based, uh, the oat category is already having 75% of the market share compared to soy and almond. Um, now in the UK, oat is again the dominant uh, category with soy and almond actually falling over the years while oat is rising over the years. And actually oat surpassed almond and soy sometime around mid last year. Oh, sorry, actually it's 2021. So at that point, um, which is ex extremely exciting to see. Uh, in Germany, again, oat has a clear, clear dominance compared to soy and almond. And lastly, in the US, uh, as you can see, um, the 
Um, this yellow one is almond. So the almond milk um, category is sort of losing market share while Oat is actually increasing its market share. And I do expect that Oatly would surpass um, almond at a point in time as well, uh, even in the United States, which is a huge opportunity for Oatly because it is at the forefront of all of this. Um, so that I found that definitely very interesting. I wanted to share that with you. Next up is an article which I just saw, um, which says that one in three people from the UK uh, drink plant-based milk, according to a report that suggests that they have become a mainstream choice for consumers. Um, and shoppers spend about 100 million more in 2022 on alternative milks made from oats, almonds and soy, turning it into a near 400 million a year market just for the UK. Another very interesting trend, uh, which highlights that the world is moving towards plant-based alternatives compared to uh, traditional milk. Uh, as you can see, the milk retail sales in the US um, have gradually been decreasing while plant-based milks continue to gain market share. So we clearly see that the world is moving towards plant-based alternatives compared to traditional dairy. Now, this is one of my most interesting uh, charts. Um, now, across these different different geographies, like UK, Germany, and US, Oatly is actually driving the growth for the oat market, right? So, for example, in the UK, uh, Oatly is actually contributing to 46% of plant-based milk growth contributed just by Oatly year over year. In Germany, it's 19% and US is 32%. Now, this essentially means, as you can see here, it's calculated as the sales value increase for Oatly divided by the sales value increase for the total plant-based milk category. And Oatly is clearly leading that category, which is extremely exciting to see. This was also shared in the, in the conference call and, and the earnings reports. Now, let's have a look at the Q1 2022 financial results that Oatly just reported. Uh, so Oatly wants two things to stand out for investors. Number one being that the first quarter revenue was 166.2 million. And the second being that this, that the 2022 outlook has been reiterated upon, uh, which means that they are still holding on to that guidance, which is great to see. Now, if we head over to Seeking Alpha, uh, what we can see is that the expectation in terms of revenue was about 161 million when they actually came out with 166.2 million, thereby beating the expectations by 5.74 million. Uh, that was again, great to see. Um, so the revenue story for Oatly is very, very impressive and it's expected of the company to grow 38.4% this year, which is extremely good. Now. Let's see a breakdown of their revenue across different markets. So in EMEA, so if you don't know what EMEA means, it means Europe, Middle East, and Africa. The EMEA revenue was about 90 million, which is a 10% increase, uh, which is much lower than what was expected actually. In Americas though, um, the revenue was a 40% increase, which was amazing. Uh, in Asia, again, the revenue increase was about 15%, which was much lower than what was expected. But the good thing is that Oatly clarified exactly why this happened. So they said in their earnings call that their total production volume was 120, 121 million uh, liters in, in the first quarter, which was in line with their previous guidance. Now broken down by region, EMEA production was in line with expectations. America's production was impacted by COVID-19, uh, severe weather conditions and logistical constraints, and Asia production ramp up was slowed due to the COVID-19 lockdowns, as we all know, impacting the food service demand environment as well. There were supply chain disruptions, and hence Oatly had set the expectation already in the last quarter for the production volume being lower in Q1 2022. So this was not too much of a surprise for analysts. Um, they also reiterated on the fact and reassured that while these setbacks were unfortunate and temporary, they remain focused on what they can control rather than being uh, misguided by you know things that they can't control. This chart shows you uh, their distribution of revenue. So as you can see, 54% of their revenue came from EMEA, which is where they are dominant, um, and they are newly and growing in Asia and Americas. So Asia accounted for about 17% of their revenue and Americas for 28%.
Now, in the EMEA region, uh, what we can see is uh, in the last 12 months, ending in Q1 2022, uh, their revenue was 345 million. Now, the great thing to see is that they are already in 52,500 retail doors and about 15,000 food service locations um, in EMEA. Now, uh, they also have like insane amount of display space and rolling out, you know, broader portfolio of products as, as we have seen before. Um, now, in the Americas, things get even more interesting because their growth trajectory is a lot steeper in the Americas because they're new and growing there. Um, so they made 193 million in the last 12 months, ending in Q122, 2022. Um, they are in 14,500 retail doors and 38,000. Okay, let's have a look at this again. 38,000 food service locations, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and they are number one in velocity um, when it comes to dairy and plant-based milks. What that means is the amount that you make per store, per item, per week is the highest for Oatly in terms of both dairy and plant-based, which means that products sell really, really quickly in these stores, which is absolutely amazing to see this demand. In the Asia, as again, same story, uh, they are growing at a very exponential rate. Uh, the, the revenue growth here was a bit stalled because of COVID situations uh, in China. Um, and what we can see again is that Oatly is the number one selling oat milk on Tmall, which is one of the largest online retailers in China. Um, and it maintained the number one position in plant-based drinks. And again, they are expanding across retail and food services with them being in 37,000 food service locations in Asia. So to sum it all up, Oatly is the number one sales growth driver of the oat milk category in the following countries. Uh, it is the number one sales growth driver for the entire dairy alternatives category as well in these following countries. It is number one in velocity when it comes to non-dairy milk brands, which means that the products per store per week disappear the fastest amongst the non-dairy milk brands. It has also got the number one oat milk brand by market share. And it is the category creator and number one oat milk brand on Tmall, which is um, one of the largest online retailers in China. As we saw before, Oatly uh, beat on revenue and maintained the guidance for 2022, which was great to see. Um, they expect the production volumes to improve in the second quarter and even better going forward. Um, they, they really want to double down on production. Uh, that is why they're investing a lot in their production facilities. And that is literally when, uh, you know, self-manufacturing will start to show its effects towards the end of the year, um, which is which is being established right now. So the revenue guidance is around an average of 900 million, which represents a 40% year over year growth. Um, they expect to spend about four to 500 million on capital expenses, CapEx, it's also called CapEx. Um, and the run rate capacity at the end of the year, they're expecting that to be around 900 million liters, thereby assuming that the production capacity would catch up over the years, given their investments and in all the production facilities. If we look at the Q1 financials overview, what we see is that the company made 19% increment in revenue compared to the quarter last year. Uh, they also called out that the revenue growth was negatively impacted by several factors, including lower production output and lower than expected sales in Asia, primarily in China because of COVID restrictions in place. Um, their gross margin also decreased from 30% to 9.5%, um, and that was mostly impacted by inflation and higher cost of production uh, related to the new capacity uh, investments that the company is making, um, which is a very good thing. Um, although it is important to call out that the company is very ambitious and they want the gross profit margins to be above 40% long term. Um, and, and that's why they're trying to invest in these um, product, uh, capacity investments so that, you know, we can, we can actually meet the demand uh, by producing a lot more. We also see that the adjusted EBITDA margins decreased to 43% uh, from six, minus 16%. Uh, and that is mostly owing to the lower gross profit in this in this quarter. Um, lastly, but not the least, CapEx. CapEx, for those of you who don't know, um, it stands for capital expenditures. Uh, they are funds used by a company to acquire, upgrade, and maintain physical assets such as property, buildings, technology, equipment, and so on and so forth. 
uh, it's often used to undertake new projects or investments by a company. So Altly is continuing to invest in capacity to meet the demand and the investments primarily focused on uh, these following facilities, which they want to have up and running as soon as possible. Now, if you look at the financials of the company, uh, as of March 21, which is end of Q1 2022, Oatly has got a cash equivalence and short-term investments of about 411 million, and they have fully unutilized revolving credit facility of approximately 475 million. Uh, on the other hand, their debt is very little, and that is literally 5.3 million. Now, if we look at the cash flow for this quarter, the net, net cash used in operating activities was about 69 million, and the capital expenditures were about 53 million. So if you sum them up, um, the net cash flow for this quarter was about 120 million. Uh, now, if you look at the company, uh, and if we sum up the cash equivalents and revolving credit facility, um, they have about 900 million, whereas each quarter, even if we expect them to burn cash at this rate, which is 120 million per quarter, they have a good runway, which is about eight to nine quarters, which is more than two years. And I think that gives them enough time to be in a place where all these you know, investments in um, production facilities and the investments in making sure that the gross margins can increase will get them to a very, very stable state. And two years is a very long runway for that. So that's, that's a great thing to see. One of the things I love about Oatly is how they are driving growth through innovation. Now, we all know that tea is a massive market in China. Coffee is not as big in China as it is in Europe and Americas. And, and tea is a part of the culture uh, you know, in China. And, and it's great to see that Oatly is making products to directly address this audience. Now, in China, I was reading a much cited study which said that it is estimated that 92% of adults had trouble absorbing lactose, which means that dairy or dairy milk is not a big thing in China. So introducing some sort of a creamy tea that the people can have is a huge opportunity and is an untapped market in, in, in China. It is great to see that Oatly is doubling down on that with products like these. Um, they're also broadening their portfolio with different formats and product categories. So as you can see, they are like, introducing 250 milliliters, small size pack sizes to make sure that they can have their presence in retail and e-commerce and also promote you know, on-the-go consumption, which is absolutely amazing to see. Oatly is doing a great job in terms of scaling efficient global oat milk production by creating new production facilities. The Ogden facilities remain on track to finish ramping up by the end of the quarter. Uh, Singapore is expected to reach fully odd utilized production in the third quarter, and Manchan is continuing to ramp up throughout the year pending the overall COVID-19 environment and lockdown restrictions in China. They also mentioned that the production volumes reached all-time highs in the Americas, and they added onto the fact that localized production in Asia and Manchan and Singapore will really enable Oatly to actually further diversify their product portfolio with new products and performance of future growth in food service, retail, and e-commerce. Oatly expects production volume in the range of 135 to 145 million liters the coming quarter, which is a leading indicator of revenue expectation and reflects that their growth is a function of their production output. Uh, before we begin, uh, just a disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor and all the opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. Do your own research before you invest into any stock. So let me walk you through why I think this company could 5x in the next five years. I'm a long-term investor and I'm not looking into trading the stock in any way or form. I'm holding it for years and years to come, maybe four years, maybe five years, maybe even more. Um, now, assuming a reasonable 30% year-over-year growth, uh, which is quite likely for this company, uh, in fact, if you look at the analyst estimates, they expect the company to grow by 46% next year. But let's say for simplicity, even for a very reasonable estimate, let's start with 30%. That means that if the company grows by 30% year-over-year, by end of 2026, this company should be making about 3 billion in revenue. Let's say 2.85 to be very exact. Now the company in the long term wants to get to 20% EBITDA margins. Assuming they get to 20% EBITDA margins, that implies 
the company would make $570 million in EBITDA by 2026. Assuming a 20 multiple, the market cap of Oatly by end of 2026 should be about $11.4 billion. And the current market cap of Oatly is about $2 billion, which represents more than a 5x uh, going forward. In addition to all of that, the management believes that Oatly is once-in-a-generation company uh, leading transformation of the food industry through natural nutritional health and sustainability. I believe Oatly is positioned to become the number one plant-based milk globally, and the data continues to show that oat category is gaining share over other dairy alternatives across key markets, and we are and, and, and Oatly is an important driver of this growth. Um, the opportunity in front of Oatly remains massive. In the near term, while Oatly is continuing to prioritize growth investments over profitability, um, that is mostly to make sure that they can serve their customers and consumers as they're driving the conversion you know, of dairy users to plant-based products. Uh, Oatly is also heavily investing in their business to establish the infrastructure necessary for a global company on a multi-billion dollar growth trajectory. This includes not only innovation, and digital infrastructure, but also production capacity, which is a key factor in achieving growth. I know you might be wondering how many shares of Oatly I am currently holding and what is my plan for the future. I currently have about 10,000 shares of Oatly, as you can see. Um, I want to be very transparent about that. Um, at an average price of $4.46, which is decently low, but right now Oatly is even lower than that. Um, now, if the stock tips even more, if it goes to $2, I'm going to buy even more. But right now, at this price, I'm pretty comfortable with my position. And I still think this, this stock will make me a lot of money in the next four or five years. I want to leave you with one quote by Warren Buffett. Uh, Only buy something that you'll be perfectly happy to hold, even if the market shut down for 10 years. That is me with Oatly. I don't care what happens to Oatly short term. I don't care what happens to Oatly one year from now, two years from now. I will hold Oatly for at least four or five years. And that's the minimum I will hold it for. That's when I think I would get that 4x, 5x uh, investment, uh, return on investment. Thank you so much for staying with me. If you liked the video, please smash and just destroy that like button. Uh, also make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell icon to make sure that you don't miss out on any future videos. So yeah, let me know what you think. Do you own Oatly? Are you planning to buy Oatly stock? Do you hate it? Uh, any comments are welcome. Uh, thank you and have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.